In today's show, it's Monday Movers. We're looking at rank changes, ADP changes across the fantasy basketball landscape. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. Indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at basketballmonster.com. You can find me on Twitter as always at redrock underscore b-ball, on Instagram at, or on TikTok actually, at redrock underscore b-ball and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Today's episode is brought to you by Bird Dogs. Go to birddogs.com slash locked on NBA. Went to the promo code locked on NBA for a free water bottle with any purchase. You won't want to take your Bird Dogs off. We promise you. Thank you also for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free. We are available on all platforms. Thank you also to the response of the show yesterday where I talked about my Durant metric. I didn't go into huge amounts of detail into how we get there. Again, that, a lot of that stuff is a little bit proprietary, working on behind the scenes. If you are a Basketball Monster member, by the weekend, we are hoping to have the Durant as uh, Durant rankings and values up as an option on the site to go along with traditional Z score rankings. So that that is going to happen uh, by the weekend. We hope we get that up there and sort it out. And it's just uh, my major point with it is I think there is some fallbacks and drawbacks to Z scores, but also just to give you an idea that a ranking of ten or twenty or thirty doesn't mean that there's more ranges involved in all of this stuff. So. A guy that is 13th might be 27th if you weight things slightly different. And the way that things fall off and change can be really important that we don't over-rely upon overall ranking numbers. That's the point of all that. Um, what we're talking about today is a show that is going to run every Monday. It is Monday Movers. We are looking at the players that have moved up or down in rankings or ADPs. Now, ESPN, Fantrax, and Yahoo haven't adjusted their rankings at all. So there's no change there. I have made some adjust adjustments to my projection. So we look at basketball monster changes and ADP data changes. How much you take out of this? We'll see. But it gives an idea of where players are moving and their value and how things are being perceived by people. So, warning. Let's get it on, Gilly. <laughs> All right. Didn't do it. So you didn't, you didn't get to see the face of me laughing this time. But we are still going to go in to have a look at what I have adjusted over on Basketball Monster over the last seven days. And yes, I did make an adjustment to Little Chungus Nikolajovic. Those two numbers in the columns, the first number I reference is the standard ranking number, all standard in the way that I look at it with um, my weightings on things. And the second one is the minus one ranking jump. There's not a huge difference in these numbers, but it is just a couple of different things we look at. Jovic jumped up six spots, uh, sorry, 60 spots and 59 in minus one ranks. Am I overreacting to his fever? I don't think so, because it is also important when a bloke's ranked 350th to go to 290th. All it takes is probably an extra minute of playing time, which is th I think all I gave him. I gave him maybe from 18 up to 19 minutes per game um, to adjust him, but he did move quite a bit. Benny Simmons went up 29 spots in regular ranks and 19 in minus one. Uh, just a little bit more confidence in Simmons being in the starting lineup. I think I had him projected at 28 minutes before. I've bumped that to 30. Now I'm still not getting carried away, and I probably wouldn't want to trust Simmons inside the top 100. But his value is rising. That obviously hurts the other sort of Nets guys like a Spencer Dinwiddie, who may move into a reserve role or a smaller role as a ball handler. John Collins, the Baptist, he moved up 15 spots and 21 in minus one ranks. That was largely just because I was sort of taking a look at Collins' numbers last season, uh, adjusting some of his shooting numbers up because he did start to figure it out towards the end of the year and just giving him an overall little bit of a usage bump versus where he was initially in my Utah projection. Still a later round guy, I think, but there is some upside there for the Baptist. Dorian Finney-Smith's up 14 spots in both minus one and regular ranks. The reason for that is because I bumped the value of Simmons and took Simmons' minutes away from being power forward and center and funneled them more towards point guard. That meant that Royce O'Neal and Dorian Finney-Smith got a bit of a bump in minutes there. Now, Finney-Smith's still not going to be any sort of 12-team league option, but it did give him a rise of 14 spots. Austin Reeves went up 10 spots and six spots in minus one ranking. Yeah, he looked 
not that great against Lithuania earlier today, especially defensively. And that's going to be a problem with Reeves is his lack of defensive stats. But his ability to get to the line, to hit shots from the line, I think his field goals are going to drop. But nice usage player, good assist guy. And just factoring a little bit more of missed games for Davis and LeBron where Reeves' value will spike. So I think he's going to be a bit all over the place. Uh, I've got no problem taking him inside the top 100, even in like the 80s or 70s. But he did jump up in my rankings. And the last one was Marcus Smart. Up nine spots in regular ranks, up five spots in minus one ranks. That was just a little bit of adjustment there in terms of some of his percentages, some of his usage numbers. But a lot of that, when you look at five or nine spots, that can be just to do with other guys around being adjusted or being changed, and that causes other players to move. That's how a lot of the category league rank stuff sort of works. Does this... This is it still is applicable to points leagues because when I move guys up or down, uh, it's going to adjust their fantasy points as well. The overall, you know, ten spots or six points or six spots might not be the same thing, but that doesn't really matter. You're more looking at trends here of the direction that um that players are moving in. We're going to look at some ADP data in a second, but today's episode is brought to you by Bird Dogs. Bird Dogs. These shorts are. So like comfortable. I I can't explain how I, I'm waiting for my second lot to come. I, I cannot wait for this lot to come because these shorts, when I get them, I just wear them every single day. That's simple as that. We get them, we put the shorts on, and I don't take them off. I wear shorts all day, every day, all through winter. Summer's coming up. And for you guys, you can wear them wherever you want to go, whether it is to the shops, whether it is to a friend's house, to a barbecue, out to dinner. The bird dog shorts, they really just go wherever you want them to go. Their khaki shorts are designed to fit slimmer through the thigh, giving you that truly sculpted look. And they're functional for any occasion, playing golf, basketball, a date night, evening out, going to the pool, whatever it is, bird dogs will fit. The issue that some people have of this stiff like look on khaki shorts, bird dogs fixes it with their new cloud knit fabric. It looks just like khaki, but it stretches, giving you that slimmer fit and their anti-stink sweat wicking fabric keeps you cool and dry all day. Go to birddog.com, birddogs.com slash locked on and enter the promo code locked on at checkout for a free, sorry, locked on NBA. Go to birddogs.com slash locked on NBA. The promo code is locked on NBA at checkout for a free bird dogs water bottle with your order. So we've had the tumbler, we've had the hat, and now we've got the free water bottle. That's birddogs.com slash locked on NBA for a free water bottle at checkout. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. We promise you. We do promise you. All right, let's look at the next one. The changes, or well, these are the down, well, I said it was ADP. We looked at actually the people who dropped in basketball monster ranks over the last couple of days. Dinwiddie, well, Simmons went up, Dinwiddie's gone down. Nine spots and 10 spots because again, just taking a little bit of the ball handling responsibilities off him, maybe knocking a minute or two off there. If Simmons is going to play more point guard, Dinwiddie goes more to a shooting guard role. Um, I also, Chet Holmgren dropped down a little bit. I made a slight adjustment to his um, block rate, I think that was what it was. So he dropped down six spots, not a huge amount. Kevin Herter went down six and seven. That was a marginal adjustment for me in looking at JaVale McGee coming in. Yes, that does impact Herter. Just McGee's a high usage player The Nerlens Noel, who I had in the rotation. So I think McGee, uh, or at least getting some minutes, and McGee just is a higher usage guy than that. So Herter dropped a little bit. Andrew Nempard went down six spots, three spots in minus one rank. Just that was me boosting Buddy Heald a little bit. Now, Heald didn't appear on the biggest rises because there were other people rising, but I did bump Heald up a little bit. And that meant that Nempard dropped down. And then another one in Sacramento there was the pencil Harrison Barnes. Barnesy. He went down six spots and four slots in minus one. Not minus wonk. Minus, minus wonk. Wow. Minus one. Grayson Allen went down six spots in regular ranks and six spots in minus one rank. That was just a slight adjustment there. Um, Taito Washington signing on the two-way. He might get a chance at minutes, but also just a little bit of extra prioritization towards Malik Beasley and sort of capping um, Grayson Allen's overall upside there. So that's the reason for those changes. But the biggest one is there. The the Simmons up, the Dinwiddie situation down, and a little bit of a boost for Nikola Jovic. And you can see those other numbers there. Across the other sites, we're going to do Yahoo, we're going to do ESPN, we're going to do Fantrax. There was a, quite a bit of movement on Fantrax ADPs, interestingly. Very little on ESPN and some okay ones over on Yahoo. Let's get in and talk about those now. Let's look at the guys on Yahoo. Now, it's hard and it can be confusing when I say up or down. Because what do I mean? When I say up, gone higher in ADP, it doesn't mean the number got bigger. I mean that they moved into a spot where they are getting drafted higher in a draft. That's what the up means. Jabari Smith was the biggest riser, up four spots in his ADP. Ah, Smitty. 
Now, a lot of the time when we're looking at these players, it's because they were probably ranked in the wrong spot to begin with. And you know, the ADP tends to follow that rank quite um, aggressively. He's still 116 on Yahoo's um, X rank, but the ADP keeps coming in, keeps coming in. If it keeps heading this way, he might get overpriced. He's into 95 now. But that is an interesting direction there. I don't really know why Cam Whitmore jumped up three spots in ADP, but he did. So we've got to pay attention to that. We're not drafting him literally anywhere outside of Dynasty Leagues. I don't think he's going to play. But he moved up. Gary Trent moved up three spots in ADP data. Hmm. Don't really know why that is. Because I would have thought with Dennis Schroeder playing as well as he is over in the World Cup, that people would have looked at a little bit more of interest in Schroeder. And of course, if Schroeder's value moves up, somebody has to move down and it probably is Trent. Because if Schroeder starts, Trent doesn't. So it was interesting to see that Gaz moved up as far as he did. We know what Gary Trent does. He's a field goal guy. He's a steals guy. I don't know whether Daka Ryakovic is going to allow that level of aggression on steals the way that Nick Nurse did, which overall impacts Gaz's numbers, but he's moved ahead of his rank, which is 105. His ADP is now 102. Also, Moses Moody moved up. When you look at Modi, Moody, Modi, Moody, 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 Moses Moody. Moses Moody. I don't really know why on that one either, but it is interesting to see that Anthony Simons him, Red. moved up three spots this week, and he was the highest riser last week. So people are really starting to look at the Simons number and saying that is just not right. That is seven spots, I believe, for Simons in his ADP over the last two weeks. He's got one of the biggest discrepancies between rank and ADP. Yahoo X rank 97, Yahoo ADP 81 with a seven spot rise. Might be getting a little bit ahead of ourselves, but of course, if Lillard is gone, Simons' value rises, but Simons' value really peaks when he is the point guard. And if Lillard is gone, Scoot's going to be the point guard. So where does Simons fit in there? So I'm not sure... 81's not bad, which is what his current ADP is, but we might get to a stage as well where he starts to maybe go a little bit a little bit too high. Jonas Vassal Inuansas. Yeah, Valanchunas moved up two spots. Is that because and I don't think it would have reflected this quickly, but because Lithuania beat the US and Valanchunas was dominating in there? Maybe. He's 31 though. He's he's got a actually he's got a big discrepancy too. X rank 127, ADP 100. I'm probably closer with him on the ADP than I am with the X rank, but I still don't love him as a player, uh, as a higher round guy. But I think I'm closer to that ADP number than I am to his X rank. But he is rising at the moment. Again, in the hundreds, totally a fine pick. If he starts moving into the 80s, then you start to go, well, maybe we're maybe we're pushing that a little bit too far. So just keep an eye on that. But the Smiths one's interesting. The Simons one is very interesting. And Valanchunas will see where that goes from here on out. The guys that dropped in Yahoo ADP, we talked about this last week, but Grady Dick was in the 70s two weeks ago. He continues to drop down six spots. Totally okay for the prestige penis. Off he goes. Bol Bol down six spots. Is this because more serious people are drafting now? And yeah, the the, uh, the crazies were drafting Bol um, higher. I don't know. He's now got an ADP of 137. His X rank is 271. So he is dropping. If you want to take a last round flyer on Bol, do it. I don't care. I don't think it's going to work out, but... Yeah, he should be coming down. Andre Drummond down five spots as well. Andre Drummond and Bowl are two of those guys that people always go, well, what if, you know, what if, what if he gets this role? What if they play Vooch at power forward and Drummond at center? What if Vooch gets hurt, then Drummond's an, a, a dominating guy? That's all true. I just, I don't know why you would be bothered drafting Drummond in a standard format league. His ADP is at 139. His rank's at 159, which is too high. Uh, but he is coming down. Precious Achua was in the same spot as Dick earlier on the big sneeze. He was way too high with ADP. He's now dropped another five spots. He is not a draftable 12 or probably 14 team league guy. And then a couple other guys that I'm just not high on, or not particularly high on, Anthony Black. He dropped down um, five spots. Mr. Black. Which, fair enough, I look. I know that they just drafted him. And I know he was the sixth pick, but I also don't think he's going to get enough minutes. His ADP is at 140, which I, I don't understand. Now, his rank is at 544, which, of course, is literally insane. He's more of a guy that's in the 200s to me, and I, I don't think he's playing a full load of starters' minutes. And honestly, maybe there's nights he's not even fully in the rotation. So, yeah, he's not really a draftable guy. And the last guy is Sasha Vezenkov of the Sacramento Kings who is going to be in the rotation, I would guess, but his ADP is at 142. It's fallen, 
down four spots from 138, but he's going to be backing up Barnes and Murray. He might have defensive stat issues in terms of you're not generating those and being bad defensively. He can score and shoot, but he's not playing a 30-minute high usage role as he was over in Europe. So I don't think there's really any standard league value there from Sasha Vezenkov uh, in Sacramento. So basically all of those guys with the biggest drops in ADP are ones that I 100% agree with. And if I had it looked at the Yahoo ADP numbers, I would have said, ah, these guys are too high. We need to drop them back down. And they did. So well done. Let's look at some ESPN ADP rises. As you can see, not many big changes. The biggest change, though, was DeAndre Ayton up two, diff- two spots in ADP. That's the highest riser um, of anyone. I think Ayton is going to take a really sizable hit. But his ADP is at 72. Um, so it's risen from there. I don't really know why it's that low. This is always one of those ones where I look at ESPN's ranks. And go, that's that's bizarre. Like, And then people still pass on him. Like His ESPN ranks at 64. And he had an ADP before this week of 74. So people just saw him at the top of that list and just kept passing and kept passing. It is coming more into, into play. I think the 60s is totally fine. Maybe early 70s. If you want to do that, it's okay. But he's coming the right direction. Benny Simmons jumped up a spot. Andy Wiggins jumped up a spot. Walker Kessler up a spot. Um, yeah, that, that's a fair trend for Simmons. Kessler, either way, I'm, I'm not I'm not as big on him. But I believe but I believe that ESPN has him Yeah, at an insane spot. ESPN, what the hell is this? ESPN's ADP on Kessler is 107 and their rank is 47. What's going on there? Ben Simmons has an ADP of 133. So yeah, it needs to rise significantly from there. And then um, Clay Thompson. Ni hao. Um, Clay jumped up a spot as well. I'm not, I'm not really sure what we're seeing with Clay this season. His ESPN ADP is at 92. That's about right. I'm not sure it needs to rise from there, but it did. And Dennis Schroeder moved up one spot as well over on ESPN. Now, that is contrary to the Gary Trent stuff I saw earlier. His ESPN ADP and rank are very far, far apart. He's inside the top 130 now on ESPN. Compare that to Yahoo is at 143. I'm probably more on the Yahoo side of things, but I don't have a problem with Dennis's value rising to its current level. We have a look at the guys that fell on ESPN. This doesn't make a ton of sense. Franz Wagner, the biggest faller, four spots. Now, is it because he's injured in the World Cup and people are, are panicking over that? It's not like his ADP is high on uh, ESPN. It's 98. So people will see his ADP at 94. They go, no way. At, no, Franz at 94, you're joking. We're going to let him fall. That doesn't make any sense. Franz should be a 70 guy, a 60 guy probably. Maybe he's a top 50. I don't know, but I wouldn't draft him there. Him falling is pretty crazy. Des Bain has also fallen. You'll notice on ESPN, there's more, the, the falls are larger than the rises are. And Bain's another one that's crazy because his ADP on ESPN is 55. And people are going, nah, no thanks. We're going to let that drop. That should be pushing 20 spots at least. That's weird. So the direction of those two makes absolutely zero sense. Miles Bridges dropped two spots as well. There is a level of uncertainty with Bridges, especially with the signing of PJ Washington. But again, his current ADP is 135. It should be 30 to 40 spots higher than that. But he's on the way down. I I do not for a million years understand that. Old mate, Asar Thompson is also a guy that fell. I think he's talking to you. It's crazy to me that Asar Thompson's ADP is at 130, whereas Bridges is at 134 or whatever it was I just said. That doesn't make any sense. But Thompson is starting to come back down as he should. And then we saw like that Yahoo saw Jabari Smith's ADP rise, but ESPN sees it fall. Weird. Like what? There's obviously no news that's changed with this, but a different response on different sites from people. What does that say about the, the users of those sites? I'm not sure. But Jabari is now... And this is another crazy one because Jabari's ADP on ESPN is 131. His rank is 115. So they're seeing him there going, nah, we're passing. What? That doesn't make sense either. Cade Cunningham, also a, a faller on ESPN. And that also makes no sense because his ADP is 72. So Ben, people are seeing him at 72 when I think legitimately he has first round upside and he's a definite round three player. 72 and then dropping is cr- it's craziness. It's craziness. Let's look on fan tracks at the guys that have moved over there. Some ADP rises, some big ones. The big fella in Philadelphia, B-ball, Paul, Paul Reed. I'm big on grabbing Reed with the last pick in a draft. If, if this is true, and you'll see it in preseason, but if this is true that he's playing power forward minutes, he only has to overtake PJ Tucker and George Nyang is gone, and his steal and block numbers, rebounds, assists, all that stuff is unbelievable for fantasy. 
And if he somehow got 25 minutes, he's a clear 12 team league player. I'd say the chances are pretty low, but maybe the fan tracks people are listening to me talk him up every five minutes. Joshy Richardson's up 21 spots. Fair enough. He's going to be a starter, I think, in Miami. I don't think there's tremendous value in Richardson, but he should have jumped up. Levert up by, um, what, 14? 14, 14 spots for Dracaris. Dracaris. Johnny Kaminga up nine spots. Yeah, not really sure what would have changed there. He's not really a draftable 12 or 14 team league guy. DeLon Wright up six spots. That that rise of six spots for DeLon actually pushes him into standard league discussions on Fantrax. No chance that I want him there. None. Streaming for steals, but I'm not drafting him at all in any of that format. And then the duck, Luke Kennard, is up five spots over on Fantrax. I guess that's the early season boost. The chance that he starts, maybe he knocks down three threes for the first 25 games. Gives you 15 points with three assists and three triples. It's useful enough. I took him with the last pick in a mock the other day as well. And then on the other side of fan tracks, the guys that have dropped, hard to argue with many of these, honestly. You've got Kyle Lowry down by eight spots. Double cheeked up on a Thursday afternoon. Cole Anthony down seven. Just too hard to find minutes there for Cole. As much as I like him, too hard to find minutes. Gabe Vincent down six. Well, with Reeves and Russell ahead of him, he's probably just going to be a deeper league guy. Caleb Martin down six. Just not a great fantasy player, despite the great Eastern Conference Finals run. Dyson Daniels down five spots. Really didn't do anything at the World Cup, and minutes are still hard to come by. And DeAndre Hunter down five spots. Just a very, very, very low upside player who was probably going to start, but maybe he doesn't. I don't know. I think he's going to start, but he's dropped five spots down there as well. And that is the end of Monday Movers for this week, the week beginning 4th of September. Just showing you the trends across fantasy later on today, maybe tomorrow, depending on where you live. The Center Tiers video will come out with myself and Matt Smith. That is the end of our Tiers series. What else do I actually have coming up this week that you guys might be interested in? Let me go to my schedule. All right, so we're going to do something on... Ooh, there looks... Ooh, there's an auction mock draft on the schedule. Very interesting. Going to do an auction mock draft this week, some more auction content this week, maybe some stuff on preparing um, second year players. That's all on the schedule. I'm not going to tell you exactly when because I don't know how it's all going to work, but there is there is an auction mock on the schedule for this week. And the best way that you never miss out is you subscribe to this channel, you flick that bell, just really knock it around so you never miss out on a show. And subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on the Odyssey app and on YouTube. Thumb it up. Leave your comments down below. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya. What's up, boss? You believe now?